Hello, everyone, and welcome to the show. Coming up this week, we're going to talk about buying your DVC contract on a Disney cruise on this week's episode of the DVC show. The DVC show is brought to you by DVCstore.com. For more than 25 years, the DVC store has been buying and selling Disney Vacation Club contracts. Let one of their licensed real estate experts welcome you home. Visit them on the web at www.dvcstore.com or give them a call at 1-800-550-6493. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the show. Coming to you from the Bob Varley Studio in Orlando, Florida, I'm your host, Pete Werner, joined at the table this week by my good friend, Sean Falk. Hi. From the DVC store, Mr. Jerry Saito. Bonjour. Uh, Joining us via Skype, Mr. Pete Shidley. Hey, everybody. And back on the controls, Mr. Corey Fiascanaro. Welcome home. And welcome to the show, folks. Hope your week is off to a good start. Before we get started, just want to do a couple of plugs. One for DVC Store. Uh, Specifically, if you're interested in selling your DVC contract. I know we talk a lot about buying your DVC contracts and researching that. But if you're in the market to sell, maybe you want to trade up. Maybe you want to get, you know sell your contract and buy something new or whatever, uh, you want to give DVC Store a call, 1-800-550-6493. Also on their website, a lot of information on what you'll need to do uh, in order to sell your contract. But their agents, Jerry, Jamie, Scott, Jason, Yamlin, uh, all uh, there to help uh, with any of that. So there's that. And I also want to give a plug for dvcfan.com. Uh, my blog, my DVC blog, which is doing really well. We've got a lot of great articles going up uh, at least three or four times a week now, um, which has been challenging and fun. Um, And, of course, we can't forget disboards.com, best information on DVC on the Internet. Uh, The DVC forums uh, are awesome. It's how I get my information. Um, So want to make sure we get that plug in as well. All right. So... Uh, Sean and I just returned from a cruise to Alaska, and Sean became the newest member of the team to join DVC because I am apparently like the Pied Piper or something. Um, And uh, it was a very interesting experience uh, buying it it on the cruise. I was very interested to see how that was going to go. I wanted to see, you know, what, what it was for DVC members, like what was that whole thing? What do they do for DVC members when you're on the cruise? But I'll let you tell the story, Sean. You're better at it than I am. So Okay. Um, yeah, we um, – uh, Pete had already told me before we were going on the sailing. He said, do not let me buy points. He was like, that's the number one job for you for the, for the week. And I was like, okay. Because um, he wanted to go to the DVC functions, and he said they always have gatherings. And I guess I've never noticed them because I wasn't a DVC member. So, like, I didn't – I just breezed right through it. So um, uh, he did say, like, I want to make sure I go to it, and I want to make sure that I don't buy any points, but I just want to see what happens. So uh, it actually, the meetup was the first night. Um, They went ahead and had it right then. And the beginning, it was like a showcase, essentially. They played a video of Riviera. They played a video of Olani. um, And a couple of new additions at Disney World, like theme park-wise, Um, most of the people in the room were DVC members. Um, there were some people that were like brand new to it and just had no idea what was happening really. Um, cause it was kind of advertised as like DVC gathering, but it was more of like a, that one was like a sales pitch. It was a sales pitch. That was a sales pitch for the first one. And so even at the end, they're like, there's sign up times at the back, like make sure you get in because we're going to be super filled up. Right. And and these were, just to make it clear, these were sign ups for you to sit with mm -hmm. a DVC guide and talk about buying DVC. Right. So um, they were like, oh, you know, uh, get your time now, sign up because it's going to be super slammed. So you got to make sure you're in here and everything. And of course, I'm like, like, okay, cool. I'm sure it's going to be so slammed with everybody wanting to, wanting to do this. Okay. Um, so Pete and I talked about it, and he was like, uh, but they were offering twenty five dollars of onboard credit for every person who came. So I was like, well, we'll both go to the sit down or whatever, and we'll get 50 bucks for onboard credit, which I don't know if we ever got that or not. I forgot to look. I didn't even look. Um, yeah, we need to look at that. Um, so uh, we um, 
but anyway, so they, they told us we'd get it, so we don't know. Maybe we did. And um, so we were like, okay, we'll go do the sit down and talk about it. And Pete just started discussing it, and I was like, oh, no, like I think he's going to end up buying some more points because he wanted to buy direct points. And uh, like I ended up being the one to buy <laughs> Into, uh, uh, I bought it Olani. Uh, it made the most sense for me. Um, as we, I had Doug as my agent, and he was really helpful. He was really nice. Um, it was him, and uh, there was a girl as well. I think her name was Christine or Katrina or something. And um, so essentially, you go to the DVC desk, which is on deck four. And they will, uh, you know, come up and get you and take you downstairs. Um, so the offices are actually on deck two. And they have, like, they've taken cabins. Mm-hmm. Like, they've taken a couple of cabins out of commission and turned them into DVC offices. Yeah. They have, like, a blue door on them, yeah. so it's different. It's, like, the DVC blue coloring or whatever of the door. And so those are – the there's three, and the two on the outside are uh, the two agents, and then the one in the middle is financing. So you can go ahead and move from room to room as you need to. And um, so – we went ahead and, uh, you know, I just got information. Uh, they talked to, they had, like, the huge screen in there to break down, like, price points and what all you needed and what all was going to happen. And um, they did offer some incentives for buying on the cruise ship by comparison. Don't know if they have the same ones on land. I don't think they do, but I'm not sure. So uh, for mine, it was um, at Riviera or Olani if you bought, if you bought 170 points, you would get them for the price of 150 points. Um, you could get like 200 points for the price of 170. So like the more you bought, and I mean it went all the way up to like if you bought 600 points, you'd get like 13 grand off of your your total. So not 100 percent if they do that on land as well, but they definitely do on the cruise line. And um, so eventually it just became a thing of like which which one do you buy which which you know, resort am I going to buy into as my home resort? So I took a day or two and thought about it, and Alani made the most sense for me. Um, I live like three miles from the park, so I – and I have – I own my house, and I don't really need to if, – if I need a room at Disney World, it's very last minute. They can stop me. Yeah, like <laughs> mine's very last minute, um, so I don't I – don't, plan out 11 months out in order to get the things that I want or even seven months out. I'm not going to plan that far out. And, uh, Hilton head and Vero beach. I didn't necessarily want to try and get in with that on the wait list just because I've never been to either of them. And I was like, I don't really want to buy somewhere I've never been. And also the maintenance fees are pretty high there. And I was like, uh, like that just doesn't work for me. I don't go to the grand Californian enough for that to make sense. And so it was like, that leaves Alani and I love Alani and it would be nice to be able to go out there and have points to go on vacation. And I'm also very interested in RCI. So that was a big selling point for me as well was, but you also, um, you know, the resale restrictions Mm -hmm. on Riviera was a, was a, a non-starter for you. Yeah. Um, Riviera was, based on the pictures and everything, that was somewhere that is so nice and I really would like to go that would have put me on the mon- I mean, on the uh, Epcot loop like I wanted to be on because I've always been interested in Boardwalk and Beach Club. Could have bought Riviera and had the Skyliner way of getting over there and I would have gotten like the full 50 years, but I just don't know about the resale restrictions. And I mean, I talked to our guide about it. He said that he wasn't particularly worried about it. And it did bode well for me that he himself had bought Riviera. So I was like, well, you apparently mean that because you bought it yourself, but still, I don't know. So I'm still hoping Disney overturns that, but not enough for me to buy. And the way you use it, again, if you yeah. bought a Lonnie, you still have the seven month window or less. So, yeah. you, and you have the ability to stay wherever you want. So, right. so it made, I think that makes sense. Yeah, you can use sense. those points at Riviera. Yeah, because yeah. um, exactly. they're direct points. Yeah. So essentially, um, I talked to him about um, I was not interested in buying. I, I, at that point, I'm like, I could buy 170 points. I've always planned on buying a resale contract, and I was always just going to buy like 75 points or at most 100, but even something as low as like. 35 points because the really the main thing I wanted something for was New Year's and so I only needed some points for like those days right around Christmas and New Year's to just have a night or two and I'm not really that much more and so I never 
planned on buying as many as 170, which is where I ended up at. I don't know how I'm going to use them, but um, don't worry. I, yeah, I was like, I don't know that I'll I help can you. use them. Um, so I uh, ended up with 170 points, and I, you know, can go out to Alani. It frees me up to do a lot of different things, and I just told him I absolutely wasn't going to get one contract as 170 points because I'd have trouble reselling it already. Alani resales like a hundred to $105 a point. Um, and I just was like 170 points would be tougher to unload than smaller point packages. I will I tell you, I agree with that yeah. statement, but 150 to like 250 is the wheelhouse. That's typically what people buy. Mm -hmm. But you, I think you said uh, 85 and 85. Yeah. I was able to talk to them. I, yeah. yeah. I told you that I yeah. thought it would be a better idea to do two smaller contracts rather than one. Yeah. And that, you you needed to make them give you the same deal, the same incentive they were offering, mm -hmm. but on two eighty-five point contracts rather than one, one seven. And, and they were able to they were able to do that. They did that. They let you split the contract up. They, yep. they did. Um, I sat down and talked. Uh, I sat down and talked with my guide, and I just explained to him like, "Hey, this is really what I'm looking for, and this would be a deal breaker for me." They were offering me a September. Um, they were offering me a September uh, use year. Um, if I was interested in that because it was so close to September, like, I mean, literally it's in like a couple days. So like you'd get your points really fast and all that. And I was like, well, I want, I'm going to split the contract. I don't, I want the incentive, but I also want two eighty five point contracts instead. Um, so we had to like email people and make some calls and everything like that, but got it approved eventually, but was like, you have to do a December use year because that's the only way I can make this work. And I was like, whatever, that's fine. I didn't really care what the use year was anyway. So they were the one pitching September. So I was like, that's fine. I don't care. And um, I mean, the only thing that changed was that two closing costs had to be paid because it was two completely separate contracts. What are the closing costs? Did, uh, you it was 5 20 yeah, was like 511 like yeah 511 i think okay. yeah 511. Uh, so it just had to be paid twice and i was like well for the 500 bucks i feel safer having 285 point contracts so yeah. definitely if you can talk to them and you want like oh you want to buy 300 points and get an incentive and get it as like 300 point contracts and you don't mind paying the closing cost like or two 150s or whatever right yeah. they will deal with you like you know to add on what you need as far as that goes and you know, one thing I thought was interesting is that a big a big factor for you, as we were talking about it on the ship, a big factor for you was the RCI. Now, mm -hmm. that was a non-factor for me completely. Yeah. But, you know, because I've looked at the RCI stuff, and I'm like, I can't make sense of this. But you are, I mean, Sean will find the absolute best. He, he, he's that researcher, right? He's that yeah. consummate researcher. So you've been digging in. Oh yeah, on no. RCI. Immediately, <laughs> RCI was interesting to me, and I understand that you could buy an actual timeshare with RCI for a lot cheaper than buying DVC. So I don't recommend purchasing DVC just to use as RCI. But it's a nice perk. But it is a nice perk for me because I mean I can get a week as low as eighty points, and I'm I live by the Disney parks already. I've been to Disney World and Disneyland more times than I can even count. And I just know that now at this point, like my contract's going to end in 2062. So I'm going to be in like my 70s by the time this thing is done. And so there are, I'm not going to want to go to Disney every year for the next 40 something years. Like I just, I'm not. And uh, I will want to go do other things. And like, I want to go to Africa. I want to go to Asia. I want to go see some other things. And I don't, I mean, the locations of a lot of the things that are in the RCI collection are weird because it's like not Budapest, Hungary. It's like Bergen, Hungary, where you're just like, I don't even know where that is. And then you Google it and it's just like not anywhere near the towns or, you know, any the major cities. But I don't particularly care. Like if that's where my trip is, I'll plan my trip based around getting good points because I just want to go somewhere. So Right. Well, you're you're definitely that you're the explorer type. Yeah. Um, so you want to go. Oh, yeah. I'll find my flight deal first, and then I'll base my trip around where I can get a good flight. So, yeah, that's... So, I, and, and a lot of people have been asking us about doing a show on RCI, which we will. Um, I think now we that... do it first. Now yeah. that there's... Well, I think at least the research yeah. necessary. Mm -hmm. We don't even have to do one necessarily, but, yeah. um, you know, now that you're doing all this research, I yeah. think 
then the next couple of months we'll be able to do but the show on RCI. Well, that's one of the things is like with there, depending on where it is you're going, the actual like low season, high season can kind of shift a little there, bit. Like yeah. if there's a low season in January over in Europe and then there's a low season – in September at a different area, like, you know, depending on how the scales go of like each area of the world that you're going to, I can do 80 points and 80 points on the low end and I can get two weeks. I'm still under my 170 and I've got 10 points left over to bank or whatever I need to do. And I can do, I mean, I was looking at it last night. I can do 80 points and go to Malta and I can do, you know, 80 points and go over to, you know, Thailand and do a vacation there. So it is beneficial to me and that's interests me a lot. So, yeah, I, uh, but the, the overall, I, I know I will say Doug was very good. Um, the, the guide on the show. Oh yeah. He was great. Yeah. Was great. Um, they, uh, they have, uh, gifts for DVC members, uh, each day of the cruise, you just go to the, uh, we didn't do that a lot. We didn't go to get our gifts every day. Yeah. Um, but, uh, you just go to the DVC desk on deck four and they always have something new every day. You can get the member magnet for your door, uh, which was really cool. They gave us two so we could make a Mickey ear, Mickey ears. The last time I took a Disney cruise, they had stuff already in my room when I walked in. Was that, is that No, we didn't. Um, again, we booked this really last minute, plus we got an upgrade at the port. Mm -hmm. So it's very possible the original room we had had the DVC stuff <laughs> in it, and it just never got to me. Maybe. Um, but uh, overall, I mean, there was a lot of cool... Yeah, we were able to do the financing right there. So essentially what happened was I agreed to do the purchase. Um, I filled out all the forms and everything to finance. And um, they said, hey, tomorrow when we're back out at sea, because they couldn't do it in port, they were like, you know, back when we're out at sea again, we'll have you come in and sign the final paperwork and everything should be approved. So uh, you know, I kind of signed everything in Skagway in Alaska, which was like the third-ish day of our trip. And then the fourth day was Juno. We went back that night and sat down with the financier and like, you know, signed all that paperwork. And then the only other thing I had to do is get it notarized. And they would be able to be a notary were we you know, had it not have been so late in the trip, like they would have been able to do something. Um, and they'll actually like go off, like in the ports, you can, they'll arrange a notary to meet up with you if you want to go ahead and do it right then. So you can get a notary in any of the, Dis in, in the ports that Disney's stopping at. We were too late for that and really just didn't have time anyway. Is the tour so, like sitting at a desk and they tour you at the desk? Or are you kind of mobile moving around the ship? It's or? it's in, it's just at the desk. Um, it, you know, for yeah, the They're not it, doing a tour, so you're not seeing rooms oh, so or anything like that. No, 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 no. Yeah. Um, that's more, you know, the that first night, the presentation they gave was really showing off Okay. Like all the, you know, the artist renderings for uh, for Riviera. Riviera, showing videos of Alani and things like yeah, that. Yeah, it seemed to be that most people were just adding points because almost everybody attending was already a member for the most part. And so I, very, no like nobody I ran into that I asked about it, they all were like, oh, we already own and we were just considering like yeah. buying. And then also because they were offering the $25 incentive, a lot of people signed up. So like it did give me an eye. Like I, I rolled my eyes about it when they were like, make sure you sign up. But I was like, yeah, like literally make sure you sign up because how long was the tour? Um, oh, well, I mean, again, it wasn't a tour so, so much. Just the discussion. The discussion was about an hour. We sat yeah, probably about an, hour. about an hour and they were, they were pretty booked up the entire time. Cause I mean, they would leave their stuff, like their actual help desk and everything like as they're helping other people or whatever. And I mean, they were loaded for the day with, uh, they stuff. sell, I was surprised to see how active that desk is, uh, on the ship. They sell a lot of contracts on that ship. Yeah, I know when I went to purchase mine, there were three other families just at that time that also were finalizing their contracts. So they sold at least four. So I don't know how many. I sure they sold more than that. But <laughs> now something I want to uh, that I thought was interesting. Uh, there are certain legalities that apply depending on where the ship is when you buy. So, for example. Um, you have, um, I think in Florida, you have like a, 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 
uh, five days if you change your mind, or seven days if ten. you change your mind, or ten days. Oh, sorry, ten. ten yeah, sorry. ten days if you change your mind. In Alaska, it's fifteen. Really. So because the contract was signed in Alaska, they have to honor that fifteen days. So he has, he's still within the right to okay, turn I around and say, right "No, I changed my mind." Yeah, um, I can uh, rate you a good deal on Alani. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, so there are legalities that apply depending on where the ship is when you buy, uh, which I thought was very. Very interesting. So, and if, uh, in the Caribbean, apparently, like there's really no restriction. So they they just follow whatever Florida, Florida is. Yeah. But if they're in a, if they're in waters that are more, um, more you know, that where the jurisdiction is more restrictive, they follow that. Right. Um, they said they follow whatever the most beneficial thing to the guest is. Um, so ten days is going to be the minimum. If you are from a state, like if you're in international waters, and it goes, if you're from Alabama and they only offer a three day, they'll still give you the ten days. But if you're in Alaska and it's fifteen days, that's what you get. However, also if you're from Alaska and let's say you're doing a Mediterranean cruise, those are just the ten days. But because you are from Alaska, you get the fifteen days, yeah. even though you're not in Alaskan waters. By being a citizen of that state, you get those fifteen days. And then the other element is when we just did the um, – we, we had met up with some people uh, that are from Israel, and they were trying to buy points, and Disney won't directly sell to people in other countries unless they're here in person. And so they actually ended up having to take the Disney Magic Cruise in the Mediterranean in order to buy points. They did the, they did the cruise specifically. To buy points. Because it was cheaper for them to do that than to come here at that point. And by the points. So, how does that work with resale? So, Disney has restrictions that, like, they're they're not registered in certain countries, certain mm-hmm. states, so they can't uh, seek out you know business in those places. But mm-hmm. if you're here, obviously, they can they can write up the contract. Resale, since it's a transaction between buyer and seller, like we're not soliciting. It's an individual who's selling and an mm-hmm. individual who's buying. If they contact us and say they're interested in the purchase, we can write it. We don't have to. We're not marketing that country or that state. It's, we're just dealing with the two individual buyer seller, and then we just facilitate the transaction. So it, we can help anybody anywhere around the world or any state. So call us if you need us. <laughs> so yeah, it was a, but it was cool. Yeah, it was a it was... very cool experience. I would recommend it if you're on the cruise. I, I would absolutely recommend it. Just if for nothing else, then you know the free stuff they give out and just to check it out. It. Yeah, towards the end of the cruise, they did have an actual member meetup. And we got which the we time thought wrong. It was at seven, and it wasn't. It was at five. So we showed up at seven, and it was over. So um, they, uh, um, so we missed that. So we don't actually know what the member mixer is like. But um, we uh, tried. We did try, and uh, but it was it was really cool. It was a good experience to get to see how it works on the cruise, and get to see how a tour is on the cruise, and like what their version of everything is. And uh, they they do some some good stuff as far as like giving you stuff. I mean, I got my backpack and I got all my stuff. They also gave like because our ship was ending in Vancouver in British Columbia, they've just now started working with British Columbia. Like before, I guess it was only Alberta and Ontario that you could buy directly from, but now you can buy direct from British Columbia as well. And the book. I think had to have been like a thousand pages. Yeah, was it was how long? Huge. It's literally as big as like War and Peace. Like it was this thick of a book that I have. That's just British Columbian timeshare law wow. or whatever. And so, like just for that one area. And like the Hawaii one is like this. So it's <laughs> it's like nothing. So I think I did also have to pay an extra something with Hawaii as well. There was one more step because it was Hawaii, but I don't remember exactly what that was. But. Um, it wasn't anything like vital and it wasn't any more money. It's just another like signing process or something that has to be done. So like it's got a we got it in Alaska and then it's got to be notarized now in Florida and then it's got to be sent to Hawaii to get notarized by them again. So It's a whole thing. It's a whole thing. Yeah. So especially when you're buying like in Hawaii. But even still on the cruise he was able to get into his member area and see his points, and mm-hmm. everything's, you know. Yep, they were already loaded. Um, I already called about my RCI stuff because I'm finagling around with that. So, you know, they're setting me up with an account there where I can, like, get in and really work it and figure out what I want to do. But, I mean, it worked out. I mean, I looked up stuff last night. 170 points currently was 
more than enough for me to get a week at Christmas So it, at Olani. So I literally could go from Christmas to New Year's if I wanted with yes. the 170 points. So it was like 152, I think. So sometimes you don't know what like points mean when somebody says like, oh, I got these points and I can do that. You know, literally that's enough to go to Olani for Christmas. So pretty cool. It's a good amount. Yeah. So, all right. So there you have it. That's uh, our, our experience buying DVC on board the Disney Cruise Line. And that will do it for this episode of our show. We hope you enjoyed it. We'll be back with you again next week. Have a great week, folks.